we've just <laughs> shut the door of the house, had an emotional roller coaster of that. We've just dropped off all the kids, so we're kid free. And now we're at the East Coast Caravans, ready to look at our new house. Talk about exciting times, holy hell. I've gone from like crying my eyes out to nervous, excited butterflies in my belly. I was just <laughs> saying like, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with getting through a whole day today with so many emotions. Ooh, I got goosebumps. Yeah. I'm excited. I just wanna get in there and have a look at it it's again. It's real. Oh, all right, let's do it. Okay. Ah. Good? Yeah. Are you good? Fantastic. Have you guys owned a caravan before? No. Alright, no worries. That's fine. We'll start on the outside and work our way in. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Alright. What are we waiting for, babe? Bloody finance to go through. It's taking a lot longer than expected. I won't mention which bank, but... Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> It was meant to go through at 1 o'clock. What time is it now? 2.09. 2.09, so it's been nearly just over an hour. And we're just literally sitting here. We're hitched, but we're not fully hitched yet. Like it's on the car, but we can't go anywhere until the bloody money goes in, so. Yeah. Talk about that close. We're nearly there. Yep. 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 Sweet, all the lights work. <laughs> There's a caravan on the back. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Jeez, it feels weird. It's the first time I've towed anything this heavy before. You can feel it sort of. I can feel the yeah, lag, yeah. not lag, but it's like good, good, you can yeah, feel you the can, second trailer or something. Yeah, you can feel that bit of extra weight on the back. It's really wide. Is it? Like, that what? Compared to the car, it looks really wide. You just watch where you're driving. <laughs> I'm too busy looking at it in the bloody sword mirrors. So we're just about to come down here. Our first place for a few nights. <laughs> That's our spotter. And I've been chilling, watching the ocean with you. Baby up with a slow motion crew. And we up in our growlings when people change, but not us. And we just chillin', kicking it, kiss by the sun. How do you feel? Achievement unlocked. This video <laughs> is five minutes 40 right now. Oh, so not five bad. five minutes since you got it in first time ever. probably the most ever. technical back end yeah. <laughs> for a first back end. That you'll ever do. That's a tight squeeze. Well done, babe. Good effort. You having fun? Having fun watching us all unpack? Yeah. Not getting in the way so far. Wow. It's been pretty good so far. Uh, yeah. Can't complain. Makes it a hell of a lot easier. Hey. GoPro, stop recording. You look like a what a crazy couple of days it's been. So, so far we've got most of what we wanted to have in here. It's actually looking kind of homely. We still need to buy a few things. We've got quite a big shopping list of stuff to get. And um, Chris has been working on the outside stuff and the car things and anything else really that isn't in the caravan. So out here, <laughs> we've got piles to go back into storage, to go in the car, get dumped trying to get through all our washing there as well even though it's been raining because all of our sheets from home we're not going to keep them um well we're going to keep them we're going to put them in storage but there's mountains of them so i'm just trying to get through them all <laughs> 
Hey guys, so we've been telling you for a while that we were going to give you a tour of our caravan and I know you're all hanging out to see inside so we've finally got set up and we're going to give you a tour around and show you exactly what we've got um, and how we're liking to use it so far. So come with me. So welcome to our home. I'm just going to start up the front end and I'll give you a tour through everything and just show you what we've got and how it's set up and how it runs and if you've got any questions at any time please put them in the comments below and we'll definitely answer them for you and let you know what we're doing. So up the front here we've got the main bedroom area. Uh, this is for Chris and I. We started off not having a bolster on the bed. We didn't think we would need it, but it turns out even when you're short, you need a bolster. So we did get a bolster. It's like a 30 centimeter one, just so it was comfy for us. Uh, we've got his and hers wardrobes. So this is my side. It's actually clean. I'll give you a quick look. Undies. And then we have, <laughs> and then we have like all folded clothes along the top. So it's the same on the other side, just Chris has his over there um, with his undies and his shirts and things as well. So it's plenty of room. I mean, we could still fit more in, but we're actually going to cut down on our clothes because we've just got way too many. We don't need them. We're not wearing them. I can't wash them fast enough if we go through them. But in these cupboards as well, we also have storage. So I've been keeping Jada's schoolwork in here um, and the laptop. And then in the back corner, there's also two USB ports and two power points as well. And on each side of the bed, there's an access hole. So that's really handy. There's actually a pocket just here where you can put your phone in as well. It's been good. That's where I leave my phone overnight and you can touch it just to check the time and it's easy to see. So that's our cupboard area. Um, I know most fans have a little set of drawers on either side. We don't, and that's because of just the way it's been set up. We have speakers next to the bed and then underneath there's also storage under the bed. It's all a bit messy at the moment, uh, but we pretty much have winter wear, extra blankets, bits and pieces, board games along the back, and there's more of them under here. And then this bit here is our combi heater. So this heats our water and it also gives us internal heating throughout the caravan through these ports here. So this is another reason why we don't have available space for bedside drawers because of how this all needed to be set up. But we keep an air fryer in here, which we've tried and it worked really well on the van, the heater and just shoes really, and our mop. So that's all there is there. The other thing that we also have down this end is this little hatch. So when we're in transport, we just shut every window, um, shut every hatch, make sure everything's closed and instead just open this guy. If you leave this open when you're traveling and everything else is shut, the way it works is positive pressure. So positive pressure is pushed into the van and pushes against all your windows and doors, which therefore stops any dust and dirt coming in. So that's the idea. We haven't been on a dirt road enough yet to test the theory, but I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. That'd be a world of difference. On Chris's side of the bed is kind of where all our gadget things are. So we keep our TV remotes here. Uh, this is our music system, which we've constantly got our iPod linked up to. So we just turn it on and we can play it inside or outside. There's speakers at both. Uh, all our mains power and then aircon, TV aerial, and then we've just put our key hooks here because they're out of the way. So up here, this is a 12 volt just for the fan. And then we have a smoke alarm and our antenna. So the antenna can go up and down just by turning it simply. And then if you haven't got any service, you can actually turn the direction of it as well. So you can change where the antenna faces so that you know that you're gonna get service. Um, but that's really about all there is here. The only thing we've done that's a bit different, the remotes, we had them attached here, but we've also put a point underneath the bed so we can just lay in bed and press a button above our heads. So they go between the bedside and here at different times. So with the TV, uh, standard TV has been really good. We have a great picture. Um, we did try Chromecast and Chromecast is just really hard to use when you're using hotspots, especially if you haven't got a portable Wi-Fi. So we ended up getting really angry with that and it's gone in the cupboard and been thrown away. So 
well not thrown away but it's just there i don't really want to think about it so we ended up putting our apple tv in for now because to begin with while the coronavirus is going on we're staying at caravan parks and we're staying at places where we have constant 240 power so we can use this but when we go 12 volt if you have any other solutions other than chromecast or how to make chromecast work every time 100% we're willing to hear them because we love our stream streaming and YouTube and Netflix and you know music all those things so we need to get access somehow we do have fans in here they're the Sirocco ones I'm sure you've seen them before so this one does the lounge area it also does my half of the bed and then there's one over here as well so Chris has this one as well and I, I think they're really good they're they're really good they're no different to being in a bedroom with a fan above your head and they're not too noisy they're easy to use easy to maneuver they're out of the way yeah i like them up here we've got one roof hatch so it's open at the moment we tend to leave it with the netting across during the day i find when there's a breeze it really comes through here so if you've got a good breeze around sometimes if it's not coming out of the window it, like i can feel it now it's coming through here really well so if you've got one try and use it they're really good and that obviously shuts off as well. So you don't have to have the light, but we like having it open. It also has extra lighting. Um, I'm yet to use this lighting. I never tend to turn it on, really. But it does have it there, so good to know. Then behind that, we also have the IBIS 4 air conditioning system. So we've used it on really hot days and sometimes in the afternoon if the sun is on the side of the caravan it can get quite warm especially if jack is sleeping in here it doesn't take long to cool off it doesn't take long to start up when it first starts up it's got a little bit of a like a turbine starting kind of sound it's quite loud to start with but once it's going it's fine it also has a night mode which i found seems to make it run really quietly so if you've got this and you want to try it overnight, click that little moon button and it goes silent. It's really good. So then I'll show you our dining area here. We've got one of the tables that moves back and forward. So you can go either way. And then it goes this way as well. Whoop, that far. Past me. And back again. The other thing I like about it, when Jack is sitting here, I've had him here a few times. And if you unlock it, you can push it down. So I put it to his height and lock it off again. So it keeps his little legs in there. But yeah, it's, it's been really cool. This also, if you put it in the right position, it's about there. You can go all the way down and lock it. Oh. And this comes across and this comes on and you have yourself an extra bed space. So I don't know, I've not tried it. I think it would annoy me with my feet off but I mean if you had a kid here they'd be fine it'd be good for a sleepover if we had an adult stay I'd probably get them to stay in a bunk and put Jada here or something she'd probably enjoy it for a bit of variety while we're at under here we've also got storage under here um, it's a bit of everything at the moment like we're still learning what's good for our van and what's not good in our van and what we need and what we don't so we've got a couple of extra kitchen things that we're not using all the time, the cryovaca, which we need to start using more often. Um, this is our little filing cabinet, so that's all ID documents, um, insurance, anything that's important. And then this is like my smelly area and all these orange packets, they're from the Kimberley. So these are all sandalwood products, which are great for mozzies and that. So I've got family that live up there and they've like stacked us full of this stuff. So yeah, if you go past the Kimberley, go to this, what's it called sandalwood factory they are the bomb they're amazing so i've got most of our outdoor smelly things there and that's about it at the moment then i'll take you around the other side so under here is more storage of which we're not even using it all yet so lovely big empty area here which is probably a good place to put things being over the wheels but i haven't put anything there yet so we've got two batteries here and then there's also two that are outside. All right. 
while I'm here in the lounge area, I thought I'd just show you one of our windows. They're all the same throughout, so they all do the same thing. So you can have it entirely open. So you've got your four points to close it. When you open, there's three clicks. One, two, three. So there are three different settings depending on how open you want it to be. And then at night time, you've got the option for privacy. So this is on every window. So we can completely shut the place out or just have them as fly screens. One other thing too, all of our lights that are underneath any cabinet spaces, we've got them under the bed, under the kitchen, here and in the bunks. They have a little touch button. So we can turn them on. And then the cool feature, they dim. So you almost can't see that. At night time, that gives you enough dim light that you can see what you're doing. Uh, if it's not enough, you can turn it up just a little bit. Or you go, oh my god, it's too much, and turn it back down. So it's they're totally adjustable. These have been really cool. Jada loves this. She's got one in her bunk bed, and that's her night light. So she'll put it on the lowest setting when she goes to bed. And then when we're about to go to bed, I usually just turn it off and save the power. So next to the door here, we have all our light switch panels. So the top panel here is for all the internal lighting and the bottom one here is external lighting. So we've got um, ambient lighting on both the floor and the roof, which you'll be able to see. And then we also have all the standard lighting on the roof as well, which is quite light. Like it's very white light. I'm not as big a fan of them. I like running the other ones. We've already had quite a few people ask about whether they're too blue. And I found with iPhone pictures and, you know, stories on Instagram, they look really blue, but they're actually not like, they're really pleasant. They're more like having a lamp on in your lounge room rather than the main light in the lounge room. So this bottom panel does all our lighting outside, but Chris will show you those when he goes out there. Here, it just tells us about our voltage. And then this here is a button for our 12 volt. So whenever we leave the caravan, we can click this and everything in the caravan, so you'll see the fans have turned off, everything's turned off. Everything turns off except for the fridge. So the fridge will continue running. Uh, so if you left and the radio was on, um, when you turn this back on, everything will turn back on again, exactly as you had it. Finally here as well, I just wanted to make a shout out. So we watch a channel called No Moss Nomads. They're just like us. They've also gone on the road and live full time in a caravan. And this was their idea to do that as a fruit bowl. And I just loved it. And I finally found one. I was like, yes, I want one of these. So that's where our fruit lives now. Welcome to our kitchen. So it's a lot smaller than what we had in the house, but so far we're doing pretty well. So I'll start with all the nitty gritties of the electrical side of things, and then we'll go into the actual kitchen itself. So up here is kind of like our control panel. Uh, the caravan itself has three water tanks, three 90 liter water tanks. And this here monitors those water tanks. We're not using them at the moment because we're on mains water. It's a moth. Easy out. Gone. <laughs> All right. So we're not using the tank water at the moment because we're on mains while we're in the caravan park. But we have done some practice time at Chris's parents' house and we did pretty well. Um, then we've done the Red Arc Manager 30 system. So the Manager 30 is in one of the below cupboards and up here is your control panel. I still to don't totally understand it. Chris understands it, sort of. But again, we're learning. So today we were going to unplug everything and start learning this battery system and figure out how it works. On the roof, we have two solar panels. There's the ability to attach to the car and charge that way. And then there's also 240. So there are three options. Um, we opted to have three solar panels, but there's only two at the moment. So we have a third one going on very soon. Then. This last thing here is the Truma system, which goes with the combi heater. So this is what controls any internal heating um, and hot water system as well. If we don't want to use our aircon because the aircon only runs on 240, we can actually use this to heat up the caravan in winter as well. So it can just literally just change the ambient atmosphere of your caravan and that uses gas or electricity. So yeah, it's pretty cool from that perspective. Uh, then this here is just a switch for our water pump. Okay, so in behind here we have a few fuses. I won't show them to you, they're just fuses. 
if you ever need to get to them. We've chosen to leave our radios here because Jada at the moment, is, she's out playing, she's down in the park and I can't quite see her. So she actually has one of these on her at all times and we do a radio check before she goes out and I just make sure she's there. Hey Jada, are you okay? I be a little bit quiet. I, I'm, feeding, I'm feeding rainbow lorikeet. Okay, I won't make too much noise. I'll leave you alone. Okay, so Jada's feeding rainbow lorikeets and the radio is annoying her for a change, so I'll leave her be. <laughs> um, I like to have my smelly things. They're not necessary, but I like having my smelly things. So then into the kitchen. Um, if I just open everything, I'll give you an idea of what we've done storage-wise. So this cupboard is the only cupboard which is probably still a bit of a mess. We've got the containers there, but I haven't really been through them. There's a bit of everything in there. We've got these little shelves put in here, which just separates all our plates. When we drove, we've just brought all the um, breakables. We've brought them down to the bottom level so that they can't move around. And nothing came out, so that's really good. I mean, obviously the handles here don't allow things to come out, but when I opened them, nothing fell out on me, which is a good sign. Uh, we've attached a few little extras along the way. So in here, just somewhere to keep like our sponge and everything so it doesn't drip everywhere. And then we've also got paper towel in behind the TV. So it's out of the way. So just trying to keep things off the bench space, really. So I've got Jack now because he wants mum, I think. So as we're saying, this is our coffee machine. It's a 240 volt coffee machine though. So if you know any 12 volt options that are well worth looking into that actually do good coffee, please tell me because <laughs> we love our morning coffees. So kitchen wise, we've got all the working sink with the black accessories. We can access the hot water here with the Truma water system. Had we had built, we would have waited a good, what, was it two or three months mm. longer to have a caravan. So we would have had to pay for an Airbnb and it would have just been such a drama. So we ended up going for stock that they had available at the time, which worked out to be the same price for us. Uh, we've got a lot of extras in this that we weren't going to have. What? Got a lot of extras in here that we weren't going to have, um, but then there's a few things that were a bit different. So one of them is all our drawers in our kitchen. So we lost some of our space. So in here, this is obviously where all your drain pipes are. This, I didn't have a clue that was going to be there. So that's been interesting. So we've got lots of drawer spaces in here um, and like just little extra bits and pieces to separate everything out because it's an awkward drawer shape to work with. So we've got the two drawers that are similar to that, which we've separated out. We have access to our freshwater tanks down here and we can turn them on and off. So you'll be able to see underneath little switches um, but then we also just keep our pots and pans and extra kitchen utensils down here all right swap sides of me in here is our voila extra bench space and pantry we're still figuring out what works for us you know um, like things like honey Chris uses honey instead of sugar with his tea so I'm using that all the time and technically it doesn't fit in this little hole but I use it all the time, so it's there. I don't know, this will change over time, but it's been really good extra storage space that we need for the kitchen. And then down here, our last cupboard, I'll let Chris hop in to show you. It's our, we don't know what to do with it yet cupboard. Um, so we've got the Manager 30 system in there, which makes it quite narrow, which means we can't really fit much in there. So we were going to build in some shelving, I think, and just make some narrow shelving with some like, what do you call it? Malamine, Malamine, chipboard, whatever it is. And so we can use that space. Uh, it's good space, we just don't know how to use it just yet. If you have any ideas, put them in the comments. Then moving on, on this side, again, we've got pantry and then I, I don't even really use this cupboard yet. I literally have a rice cooker in here and that's all I really get out of here, apart from the extra water bottles. Um, but I don't get them out, I only ever get this out. So these containers here, they're not very space saving or friendly. Um, I've ordered some other ones which are like cube shapes and they stack really well and they're meant to fit in that space. So in an ideal world, we'll be able to fit more in there bits and pieces. And then this far one here, it's just really pantry gear so you're probably wondering where the rest of our food is we run quite low on food and oh how would I explain that we just 
I think you just build up a lot of stuff as like when you're in a house your pantry is so big and here it's not and at home I just got out all the things that we're using all the time and this is what we use all the time like I don't really need much more pantry space if anything it's almost too much and in there as well we've done an extra shelf just to separate the space we were initially going to do just a grill uh, this one had the oven in place so it worked out that we just scored an oven in a sense what we were initially going to do is put the microwave underneath uh, bring the fridge up and have underneath here a pots and pans drawer so that didn't happen but we did use the oven last night and it's really good it does a really good job when you're on 240 it's fan forced which I think is really important and when you're not on 240 though it's just gas so it's just got your flame at the back but without the fan force so we haven't tried it like that yet but i'm hoping it'll be just as good cool fact about the grill which chris has found out when you're grilling and this is open a lot of heat comes out that's to keep your buttons from getting really hot and for the heat to come up here and then you tuck it away and put the grill back when you're done just cool fact because i just learned that as well but anyway so we've also got a stove top under here and with this stove top you've got one electric which you need to run on 240 and then the other three are gas so there's still an electric start even without 240 they're as easy as just starting a button why is it not working oh, i'm on the grill the i'm on the grill it's as easy as pressing a button oh and it will start so there we go we have fire <laughs> Oh, here's me trying to show you the grill. How silly am I? Well, anyway, so yeah, that's our stove top. We've used it a couple of times now. It's actually really good. I can't complain. It boils water fast. Um, it fits the fry pan size that you need. It's it's really good. I can't fault it. Actually, while I'm at it, I want to show you our fry pans and um, stove pots that we got, just in case you want something that's space saving for your caravan, but a real pot. They're really cool. So this is one of our pots and then when you buy a set of three you get the handle with it as well. Now it's a real pot and you can take it off. So yeah it's amazing. It's How cool is that? Like that's the most annoying thing when you're trying to store these things away and you've got all these handles attached to everything so you can actually take that off and then just leave it there so i have used this when i was making spaghetti bolognese um what else i've been doing it with boiling water as well and it's fine like although it looks a bit flimsy at the moment when there's weight in there it doesn't move around it's awesome and i did a uh, big breakfast for everybody so i had uh three three pans so i had two of these little ones and then the big fry pan on on there as well but everything's just a really good size but in between um changing pots and moving things you can literally just unclip one Go to the next one, take that off, move it around, shake it, do what you got to do. Take that off, put on the next one. And just picking them up off the uh, the grill too, like it's, it's just super handy. It's just like having tongs, but picking up really, really hot pans. So really handy, really, really handy. Tefal Ingenio is the range and you can get it from Big W. So easy to find. We also have a range hood. So... I tend to use these lights at night time when we've got everything else off I'll leave this on just so I can make bottles for Jack or whatever it is and that doesn't seem to interrupt Chris too much and it also doesn't bother Jada so they're really good for that it also has the exhaust fan sounds like it's gonna take off I haven't used it yet uh, we've when we've been cooking this is open the roof is open you know every, or the fans are on I, I don't know I'm not sure if it's an internal setup or not. We'll have to get on the roof and have a look because if it's internal, it's just regenerating it anyway. It's just more noise. But yeah. Whoop. Then finally, this is our knife rack. So we wanted a way to bring our knives. We've got IO Shen. I think they're called IO Shen, Japanese knives. And um, we get them regularly sharpened and like Chris's history is chefing and I just can't stand having a blunt knife. So between us, we love it. <clears throat> um, you gotta have the right knife boards for them as well though, so you keep them sharp. But we needed to bring them on the road with us. So it was like, how do we do this? And a lot of people said about using a magnetic knife holder. So this has been really good. We actually drove on the road with them on there. A couple of them had moved slightly like this. 
but other than that it was fine they're all still sharp they've got no notches and things in them so yeah it's been really good just keep that in mind if you want to find a way to keep your knife sharp and out of the way so then we have a microwave up here and the fridge which is I think 197 litres you're right I think what are you talking about he knows there's yogurt in there um I think it's 197 I'll put it down the bottom if it's different but space wise like it's decent so that's the freezer and fridge it's got a fair bit in it and then of course navigator coolers they're all magnetic so this is one of the few places in the caravan that actually magnet and it covers all the blue lights because otherwise at night it's like a disco in here so it's got dual meaning this one they're good all right moving through so this little guy here is a curtain to close off the kids we use it every night it is the best thing in the world <laughs> just to be able to be out here you can leave a light on it still keeps it reasonably dark in here um, not so much for him because he's not nosy but with Jada she just wants to watch what's going on and look out the window and so that actually eliminates that and kind of forces it kind of forces her to settle down and actually go to sleep and then what and then we open it later so that's really good so in here we've got a three bunk setup initially we were going to have a two bunk setup which would have been perfect for us with two kids when people saw that we had a three bunk setup, they wondered whether we were going to have another kid. We're not. So it's become a storage shelf. So down here, Chris has actually just installed some carpet for us. And underneath, I'll see if I can lift one for you. There's more storage. Not that we have anything under there yet, but it's good to put things if we don't need them regularly. So all Chris has done is just put some carpet on here and some edging as well, just so it doesn't look, you know, blank like the bottom of a bed. Cause it was just this white malamine stuff all the extra nappies the wipes um, a couple of linen things Jada's toy box and anything to do with laundry then this I've had quite a few questions about already I had it custom made from a place called Dow's canvas so it literally just zips open insert baby here he's gonna think he's going to sleep now and we're done so <laughs> little access holes to see him he sleeps amazingly in here he used to have problems with sleep at home and he was actually doing our head in and we moved in the caravan and he's never slept better so it's been awesome but this here like he can push on this he can lean on this and it's made out of a I don't know well it's like a type of fly screen that I guess they'd put in a tent or something so like it's fingerproof and whatnot and he can't he can't get out of here so on the top of the bed, I'll put in a little video of when Chris installed it, but it's just on a Ketter track. So if we want to take it out, it will actually slide out of place. And then on the far side, we've put one over the window. So I have my fears about this fly screen. I don't think it's going to last, but hopefully this will help it last a little bit longer. Um, we can still access the window on both sides, so I can still unlock it and open it or, you know, put these up and down as I need to. But... We'll see. I don't really know about that. I'll tell you more about it as I find out, I guess. So the other thing that's also in all the bunks is a fan. So these here, they're really good. They've got a little switch on the back. You can turn them on. They've got two speeds and they just blow out of there. So Jada and Jack, most nights we've had them on. And then by the time we go to bed, we turn them off. Oh, we go. So by the time we go to bed, we're turning them off. Here, you want one? Have a cooler yeah just like initially it's warm of an evening but then by 10 11 as it gets darker especially if windows are open it's been quite cool at the moment mm. so turn them all off and we're good to go so i'll just show you our linen cupboard so this is a combination of jack and jada's gear and also linen so this top one here has extra tea towels and things for Jack, which we won't need as he gets older. And then this one here is swimmers and towels, extra sheets. And then this is Jack's clothes. And this one in the corner is Jada's clothes. So that's literally their whole wardrobe. 
And then down here we also have a washing machine, but I'll put some footage in for you of what happened the first time we used the washing machine. What are we up to, bud? Well, I haven't used a washing machine yet, so it's just been my storage hole, so I'm just keeping cleaning products in there at the moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what's in here. There's a weight. A weight? I don't know what that's for. Oh, it's and then the other thing I've got to set up today. Yeah. Oh, pegless clothesline. So that should be cool. See how this goes. I'm curious to see how much three kilos actually takes. It's a three kilo washing machine. No, it's a four kilo. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm probably going to fit more than I thought I was. That's good. Yeah. It's I'm slightly bigger than what we thought. That's good. If you can see, sorry about the squishy, but I'm starting to fill this right up. It's a navigator bin, but we're using it as our laundry basket. And I'm hoping that one of these, when it's just full, will be one load. That would be really nice and easy. We'll see. Wash. I want to know what one uses the power. What's going on? I was just saying it's got all the different settings. You got one that's really fast mm. and then um, the eco versions, but I want to figure out whichever one uses the least amount of water. Yeah. And then stick with that. Not that we're going to use it all the time, especially if we're off grid. It's going to be pretty. Oh, it's alright, obviously. I prefer to just wear clothes <laughs> twice and do half as much washing and stay away. For yeah. Longer. Oh, live in togs. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good if we've got mains and water, like we don't have to worry too much, but it'd be good um, experience for off grid at least, yeah. anyway. Well, no, this doesn't work without 240, so we'd need uh, a generator. Okay. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. We'll we have still it, have the but... generator. Yeah, but then whether it uses a heap of water or just a little bit depends. I will suss this out. Amazing yeah, but it's how not. much. Like, it's crazy how considerate we are now of water and power. Yeah. All the things that you use at home, you never think about. All of a sudden, we think about them all the time. I'll go that way. Oh, that's these. Good. these hold the pegless line. No. I don't really know how many I need yet, though. So I'm just going to start down that end and just see how far I can go. So there's a slide into your uh, ketter track. Ketter track on your awning. I probably wouldn't use them if we weren't here for a fair amount of time, but seeing we're not going anywhere for a little while, yeah. it's a good spot. If it was a quick short stay, you've got these things in there as well. Um, oh, these guys. Like so you can attach little, them anywhere then. Like a little hockey strap. It'll make more sense in a minute once I get it up. But Because yeah. I'm going totally off memory with this as well about how they will connect, so we'll soon find <laughs> out if it works or not. Can I be anal and put the same colours together and stuff or? Well we know what you like. Well I know what you like and these people are going to get to know what you like too. What I'm like. I can't help it. She has a very mild case of OCD. Yeah I'm going to do them all Ooh. one colour after the next and then do the same pattern again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is nearly everything we do. Yeah. I've only slowly gotten used to all this so. Slowly? You've been used to it for a while. So. Uh -huh. and spin speed next time. Sean just put on the, the washing machine and just before I got <laughs> absolutely up to speed she decided to put Jack to bed. As you can see he's sleeping so he must have needed to sleep. So I might talk just a tad quieter because as you see on the way past here we have a sleeping child. <laughs> so I was going to give you a quick tour of our bathroom a squishy space so I'm gonna go all the way through and go stand in the shower and show you the shower first hey so I think it's good to be able to see it'll sound a bit loud in here now um, I think it's good in here to see the space and how much we actually have available to us so you can have like a good shower in here and there's plenty of space you can bend over you can do whatever you need to do 
and there's heaps of room. It is the best shower, you know. I always thought that we were going to have this tiny little shower because we were in a caravan. So we've put up extra hooks for all our little poofs. And then on this side here, do you want to come stand in with me? No. Show you just how much room there is. <laughs> and then on this side here, we've put up some, again, these are just suction cup suction cup things. So, and that's just extra storage. We haven't got everything that we use in here at the moment. And that's simply because we've got an ensuite. So we're kind of getting jaded to stay out there as much as possible just for now. Uh, and then we will continue using this when we move on to our next site. So bathroom space wise, you've got your tap, your under cupboard, toilet, storage up on the roof really. So in here, um, this is all gear that I don't really use much. So I do have a hair straightener and I do have a blow dryer. I've brought them. I honestly don't remember the last time I used them. I dye my eyebrows, same thing like once every six weeks so this is kind of the cupboard that we don't need much and, and Chris's hair cutting stuff so we'll probably do Jack's hair and Chris's hair with that we haven't totally figured out where we want to put things yet there's just lots of little bits and pieces kind of everywhere at the moment until we figure out what works for us so anything that can fall over or move in travel I've put in here and then this other stuff was all here when we drove I just laid these down and they were fine so they're living there for now they're out of the hands of kids which is probably a good thing and bench space wise we found these things at Howard Storage World so they're really cool they're like the easiest thing to use they almost feel like they don't hold your toothbrush in place but they didn't move when we drove and you got your one for your toothpaste as well so they're really cool and then of course we have the Dometic toilet so this has been a learning curve for us uh, the first one we filled up really fast and that's because when Jada uses it she likes to hold down the flush because she thinks it needs to flush for a long time and it doesn't uh, but it's it's like yeah I can't fault it it's actually been a really good toilet I love it it's easy to use it doesn't smell either so I don't know if I've managed to just choose a good product or I don't know I really don't know it's just it doesn't smell I had this big fear in my mind that that was going to smell and it doesn't so that's great and apart from that what else we've got the under cupboard it's really just a few more bathroom bits and pieces and then this bottom portion of the cupboard I've decided to use for cleaning gear so that's kind of where any cleaning products go oh and speaking of the toilet gear tell me if there's something better but this is the one that I've been using so someone at Bunnings actually directed me towards this product who uses it themselves he's like that one that one that one use that one and it's been really good but if there's a better one out there or if we're doing something wrong please tell us because <laughs> we have no idea we're just going off what we can Google. All right. So both the bathroom and the shower, they both have an air vent hatch. So you can just twist it open or twist it shut, whichever way. You have the option to have the fan go out so it points all the air out, or you can have it so it comes in at you as well. So actually that's really nice. I've not done it that way before. It's hot today. <laughs> There is also the lighting, so same thing. I've got them on at the moment because I want it to look pretty for you. But this one in particular at night time, if the kids are in bed and everything's really dark, I'll come in here and I shut this door behind me and then you can turn that one on. Otherwise you end up waking up the kids because out on this panel here is where all the light switches are for the bathroom. So if you do that and then open the door, there's light everywhere. But this one means there is none. So that's been really good for that. Probably the only other thing which is kind of a cool fact as well, the flooring in here, this is one piece of vinyl. So before they do anything in the van, they do one piece from the front to the very back. So there's no edges in it. So nothing's gonna crack, nothing's gonna move. It's just one piece. Um, it's just a cool feature. And just before I let Chris take over and show you outside of the van, I just wanna show you one last thing. So we've heard a lot about muck mats and we were going to get ourselves a muck mat for the front door and we we're also going to get one to go here. We did all the measurements and it turns out that the muck mat actually doesn't fit this hole. So if you're looking for another alternative because you want to have that similar effect, go to Bunnings and you can buy sheets of this stuff. So it's got the rubber backing, which grips and you can see our marker marks. So all we've done is drawn out on a piece of cardboard the size that we need and then just popped it in there. And that does the exact same job. So to clean it, you can literally take it out, give it a shake, 
pop it back in and you're good to go. So down here, right at the front, the business end, we got the DO35 Hitch Master. So as if any of you are familiar with these sort of hitches and whatnot, they're probably some of the best ones on the market or they're, they're probably the easiest ones to work with too. Uh, it's basically just a little pin, which I could probably show on the back of the car real quick. And uh, this hitch literally just sits over the top. Looks a little bit rude, but sits over the, over the top. And basically this little red button down here locks you straight into place and game over. But uh, the joys about these hitches are is that they're fully off-road so fully 360 back and forth so just about anything your car is going to go through without flipping over this thing will follow behind just nicely like a little lost puppy so definitely uh definitely a very good hitch and uh, versatile especially for us too we want to try and go a little bit more off-road and check out some real remote places so like any sort of standard trailer you've got your uh, d shackles and chains um, Obviously you brake, so that's good to have on if you're pulling up. Don't be an amateur. All the cables here. So for me personally, you've obviously got your 12, 12 point plug there. But for me, being new to this caravaning thing, I wasn't too sure about why we had two ends and plugs. So one of these is obviously to charge from the car into the caravan. So it gives it all our batteries a bit of a top up if we're running low or things aren't working properly so it's like a little last option for us and the red one is for ESC so that's your electronic stability control so that's going to help you with how the caravan performs behind the car um, if it gets up and it starts to weigh weighs a bit and gets blown around a bit it actually stops that and helps it sort of settle on the road and do what it needs to do which is really really handy um, we've also got this one here too which I've just attached to the chain. So if anything goes majorly wrong and the chains for some reason snap and everything goes crazy, this thing will actually pull out. And what that does, it releases a, a little mechanism in there and that'll lock those brakes on and shut all this down. So that'll just pull up as soon as possible. So that's, we're talking worst, worst case scenario. So, but it's good to have as like a, a dead man switch in a way just to make sure everything stays on track. Got the big jockey wheel, There's a big adjuster there, the big winder, help you get that front end nice and level and help out with uh, how everything's sitting. We got the big rock deflector. So she's a fair size, which is really good. I was really happy to have one of these because a few of them that we looked at didn't have them. So I was really happy that we ended up with this because that is gonna save a lot of damage going up those dirt roads and all the rocks deflecting everywhere. We have our two nine kilo gas bottles. So as most sort of homes, I guess as well, have this sort of system here. You can basically, if you run out on one, turn that off, turn this to neutral, turn your other one on, and then this basically, you just point to the one that you want and that'll release the gas into here and then obviously into the caravan. So that's really handy there. Uh, behind that again, We've got a mighty big toolbox here. So it might look like it's one big piece, but it's actually separated in the middle. So if I just open up this side here, the door folds down. And if you can look in there, you'll see that it's just one cavity. So fair bit of room. You can fit all sorts of stuff in there. What they've actually put in here too is a, it's a bit of a slide. So you can put all sorts of stuff in there. But uh, to, be, to be totally honest with you, I'll be straight up, it's probably not the best design. They could have done a hell of a lot better job. Yes, it is uh, good for storing stuff and if we want to really put stuff in there, we can. But again, in the, in the comments below, if you got any, uh, any hot tips or you know of anyone that sort of does any custom boxes and draw slides and all that sort of stuff, throw them in the comments and uh, we'll have a look at them because I think we'll be definitely keen to have a look. All right, on the front, you'll see one of these big LED lights on the front. So we've got one front and rear, and then we've got two on either side, so left and right. They are super, super bright. We've got the tunnel boot. So in here, the tunnel boot obviously goes right the way through, so there's another door on the other side there. 
So this is just sort of your little knick-knack. So we got the navigator bags here for like our water hoses and water connections. And then we got all our electrical. So we got all our power, power leads and things. I've got a little, just a cheap 52 litre storage container from bloody Big W or Kmart. Just got all my power tools and things like that in there. The chainsaw and just your little knickknacks and stuff that you, you need but you don't need every day. So that's really handy to have in there. Um, on the outside here, if, if you're not too sure, as most of you probably will know, is for your heater. So that's where all your hot air comes out. So just with the kids, we always try to tell them to stay away from there because it does get quite hot. Um, it does come with the bar work, which is really handy too because it is a full off-road setup. So all the suspensions, the big off-road suspension, everything's independent and it's got the big chunky tyres. But then having this, it's, it's no different than having like a rear bar or brush bars on your car. It just saves anything. If you're really taking this thing off-road, which I'd really like to try and test it out, they will uh, obviously save your uh, panel work. Um, underneath, just like any standard caravan, we've got all our stabiliser legs. So we've got four, one on each corner of the caravan. And a jader. And we have a jader underneath. Also, too, just out the front, I'm just... Hopscotch, we got a, a little tap set up too. So as long as we got the pump going or we got mains on, we can use that at any point, which is really good for the kids washing their hands and playing with birds, all that sort of stuff. Um, so just your standard, obviously, for your power, your 15 amp outlet. We got our three water tanks, so they're 90 liters each. So we got three there. So this here is a little outdoor shower. So it's great for obviously being up the beach or if the kids are running around getting covered in crap. It's uh, really good, you got it hot and cold there and it, it extends out just over a metre I think it was. So that's really handy. We've actually uh, bathed Jack, if you've seen our socials, in a little green bucket. That's a good little feature there. Uh, Tyres, so they're, they're a 16 inch, 265, 75, 16. Um, as you can see they're, they're quite chunky, they're almost like mud tyres. So. They, uh, they should do us quite well uh, over the next few thousand Ks. So we'll uh, keep in check and see how they're going. So yeah, we got the full off-road kit for this, this caravan. So everything's independent. It's all got its own uh, setup on each wheel. So it should give us uh, plenty of flex and clearance and all that sort of jazz when we're taking off-road. Just down here too, this cover here. As Sean showed you inside, we had two batteries and we have another two which live underneath here as well. So all up we've got the full batteries. With this, I don't know if many people do use or know about, but um, we just went to our nearest uh, camping shop, I guess, and got a filter. So that basically comes straight out of the, the water that they supply. and We run it through a filter before it goes into our caravan. It just, I don't know, when we first got here, there was a, like a bit of a taste of the old sort of tanky water and it sort of reminded me of being a kid again, but once that filter went on, you instantly noticed a change. So it definitely is working and probably something to look into if you're, if you're looking down that track. I've just put in a little mod. So this basically is just a fish, fishing rod holder. So I've got a cap on each end. I've got a few fishing rod poles and holders in there. I've got the rods on the other side. So it's just a, a neat little setup for us to store our fishing rods without being a pain in the ass and trying to find out where we can put them. And I've just made it all black so it all blends in. You'll see up there, that's a reverse camera. So that's a constant feed. As soon as that plugs in, I can see exactly what's going on behind the caravan, which is quite handy. We just recently put on an ARB sort of dirty bag, spare wheel on the back. We got the jerry can holders, so we got one on either side, whether we want to put fuel or water. So on the business side of the caravan, we've got the Dometic awning. This thing is really, really easy to use. I'm sure all of them are, but for me, being a first time, like it's super simple to set up. You can almost set it up by yourself. Obviously, having a second person makes it a bit easier, but it is that easy. We got the speakers on the outside, which Sean touched on on the inside. So the two inside, and then we got two on the outside. So bang, bang. So we got the 10 amp outlet, so we can charge things, which I actually did yesterday with my Hikoki gear. I had to charge a couple of the batteries. Got the antenna, if we ever want to bring the TV out here. 
and we've got some more charging points. So we've got a couple of USBs in there and a cigarette lighter there. And then we've got the, the side table, which just folds up out of the way, which is really cool. It comes in handy whether you're having dinner or a few drinks or whatever it may be. It's quite, quite a big uh, table. And then on the side is a nice little switch. So it doesn't look like much at the moment, but at night time, it actually uh, lights that up just enough to see what you're doing. Also, two with the doors, we've got a, uh, a double setup here. So at the moment, we're running just the screen door. And then we've also got another panel here. So it's good at night if it's cold or it's a bit dusty or whatever it may be, you've got that extra protection there. So it basically just clicks together. And just as easy as that. And there's a little, little mechanism here that you just flick up, which will separate those two. And then on the back, just got the little door holder, which goes onto a clamp over here, just for the wind and kids hanging off. So that's really handy. And seeing we're on the other side, this is the other side of the tunnel boot. So again, it goes right the way through. Another couple of navigator bags in there for our little knickknacks. And then just up here on the right hand side of the wall, there's another little button there. So if I push that, it lights up uh, one of the ambient lights that we have inside. So the same color and the same setup. And then it lights up this one too. So you can obviously see outside what you're doing and then obviously inside as well. So another handy little thing there. And that is basically it. Just like the street lights lit this town Like a fire in a blaze gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how So guys, we hope you found that really helpful. If you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, then subscribe to our channel to see more as we start traveling around Australia once COVID settles down a little bit anyway. Thank you and have a great day. See you guys.